The Sound of Sydney was really kind of cobbled together from three incredible trumpeters. And I think that's also what makes it interesting too, is that it's such a, Sydney is so incredible. Sydney is such an incredible musician and the breadth of music that he plays is so, is so wide that it took three of the best trumpeters in the world to be able to pull it off. It took Sean Jones, Dante Winslow and Ludovic Lewis all bringing their specialties to be able to just cover what Sidney Palmer plays in this movie. One of the concepts we talked about early on was what if we used the instrumentation of a 1920s jazz band, maybe a little, maybe a little more modern, maybe cheating at a decade or two modern just in terms of the size of the band, a couple more trumpets, a couple more trombones, but basically the lineup of an early 20th century jazz band, but the, the, the music, the, the composition, the kind of riffs, the kind of chord changes, the kind of uh, rhythms, the kind of, you know, d dance beats, all of that would be much more futuristic, much more modern than the 20s. I think that was sort of the concept. That was one of the early things we talked about. That was a way to thread the needle to keep us, you know, enough, keep a, be enough, to be believable enough in the 1920s, but still without being 20s music at all. There are a lot of things in this movie that don't, don't like they're just not meant to be realistic and the clacks in voodoo mom is something like that where it's just bigger than life it's bigger than the band that's in that scene by 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 far same for the elephant section of voodoo mama you know voodoo mama it's driven by the clacks it's got that trumpet solo and it's the track builds and builds and builds and then it has this huge gear shift and if you've seen the movie, you know why, because this elephant bursts into the room. So we call it like the elephant section or the circus section of Voodoo Mama. And the circus section is, as far as the movie goes, you know, nothing to do with the band. I mean, there is, the jazz band is still in there, but you got an orchestra, you got violins and woodwinds doing these circusy runs, and you've got um, these like piatti crash cymbal things that are very circusy, and you got uh, slide whistles and kazoos and party horns and all these sounds. So it's just really a bigger than life ending. And it's one of the things we do many times where something may start as a band and then build into something else that is, that is score and that is so much bigger than what could possibly be in that scene. Casting the musicians was really important. It's something I've never done before. In the past I just take, I know a few musicians, but I also mostly just take whoever the contractor brings and sometimes those players are perfect, but for this, there were just a few types of cues. Sydney, the Sydney cues, obviously, those sax, those dance sax cues. A um, couple other things that, I just want something very, very specific. I had something very specific in mind, so actually searching for the right people to do that, casting those musician roles was a big part of the process. I think 1920s music is, it just wouldn't, it, it wasn't right for this movie. We wanted music that was more aggressive, that was more in your face, that was dancey and, and coked up and eccentric. And uh, so I was listening to things like millennial dance anthems. I love those for this movie and for fun, uh, both good for both uses. King of the Circus, I love that piece. When Jack comes to the, burst through the doors of the Wallach party and it's a, uh, oh, 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 it's all these voices. It's like 30 of my voice, a bunch of other voices, but they couldn't get the like, they couldn't get, I had this very specific, like made up accent and intonation that nobody could get. It's like, ho, oh, 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 oh. and it was the like, the way you attack the note and then drop and then build that, ho, oh, oh. ho. We got a lot of, interesting voices on it that are adding weight and variation to it. But there's like a lot of me doing it because it's like, it's this very weird made up accent that I couldn't, could not convey to people. Um, so anyway, King of the Circus, Jack bursts through the door. It's these like weird indigenous sounding chants. It's like very primal, very like this guy is, he's king, he's the king of the circus. So like bringing in a lot of these 
real in some cases or or just like made up but kind of campy sounds that are like exotic. That was part of the score too. I hope they remember the melodies. I hope they remember the tunes. I always love that. That's like the best. Like when somebody hums one of our tunes after seeing the movie or after listening to the soundtrack, if something sticks with them, if the Call Me Manny tune sticks with them, or if the Voodoo Mama thing, you know, do 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 if that sticks with them, if any of that sticks with them, that's like the that's the highest compliment. That that's what I that's what we go for is 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 to create music that is gonna stay with people, that they could hear one year, five years, ten years, hopefully longer, after seeing the movie and they know what movie it came from. They know that's Babylon, that's the sound of Babylon. I remember, I remember watching the movie. That music takes me back to the movie, that's the sound of Babylon. This is the most complicated score I've put together by far. Um, the amount of tunes we needed across the whole score for the performances, for the score cues, for everything in between. The layers, I mean the amount of sessions we've done over the past year and a half at studios all over, the amount of players, the amount of options, the amount of, like I said, going and getting like five different trumpeters to play this solo, all the like world percussion sessions, all the sort of e eclectic and eccentric percussion sounds and party sounds and circus sounds and, and putting it all together, p combing through it, finding, it's been a really exploratory process, and so you end up with huge hard drives, huge sessions, huge, so many options. Um, we've been mixing the score for five months. 